conceptual physics class, uh, we were studying the concept of terminal velocity and its relation to force, mass, and acceleration. And we thought it would be great to have a guest lecturer come in, and our very own uh, Stephen Feldman, who is an experienced and accomplished skydiver, to come and talk to the class about uh, terminal velocity and how it relates to skydiving. Um, or kind of examples you guys talked about in terminal velocity would be really helpful. Air resistance equals the force downwards. Air resistance equals the force downwards. And what is that force downwards? Weight. Weight, well, weight isn't a force though, right? What's the Gravity. force? I heard it. What is Gravity. it again? Gravity. Gravity. So it's when... What about if you took a feather and you held it vertically? And imagine that the feather could stay vertical. If you had a feather that was flat and a feather that was vertical, and they both stayed in that orientation as they fell, would the terminal velocity of both feathers that have the same mass be the same? Why not? Exactly. The surface area exposed to that other force, that relative wind. Very cool. If he's going to fall straight down, we call it falling in a column, right? Perfectly straight down towards the earth. His center mass is about his belly button. Right? He's got a little bit of an arch like this. Right. Center mass is about his belly button, and he needs to make sure that he's got the same amount of surface area above his center mass as he does below his center mass, and then about the same amount of surface area to the right of his center mass as it does to the left. So literally, when you're moving that fast, the force on your exposed surface area is so great that it takes the smallest little input to deflect air to move you. What is the force that allows a skydiver to, to move throughout the sky? Air. air resistance. When is the force of air resistance greatest? At terminal velocity.